Welcome. Thanks for being with us today. My name is Charles Sammons, and I'm a sales engineer at Business Software. Uh, today we're going to discuss five essential reports that everyone needs. Uh, a couple of housekeeping items. We are in watch-only mode, so if you have a question, please use the question section on your webinar control panel, and we'll do our best to get you an answer right away. Uh, if you have questions after the webinar, please send them to the email address provided in the reminder email that you received. All right. So what we're going to uh, be discussing today is, uh, as we mentioned, the uh, five essential reports that everyone needs. And we're going to talk about uh, what you should know about your business, uh, the top KPIs that every business owner needs to know, right? the um, key performance indicators that are going to help you to see how you're doing right? in terms of you know, how are we doing, how are, how are our customers doing, and how are we doing with respect to our vendors. Okay? Then we're going to discuss the five reports that best address these questions. And we're going to talk about how um, you will use those reports and the reporting solutions that will help you to not only create those reports, but maintain them and uh, distribute them as necessary. We'll talk about some of the things that you need to have in terms of how a reporting solution should help you with those reports. Um, can it integrate business data for multiple resources? Um, how does it ensure the accuracy of your reports? And, and does it automate the reporting and communications process? So we'll discuss those, and then we'll do a brief product demonstration to kind of show you um, exactly um, to illustrate those, and um, and then we'll close with that. So, so with that, the in business, whatever the product or service, the key to progress is first knowing whether you're growing, uh, knowing whether you're maintaining, or whether you're declining. And once you know this, you're able to plan and implement strategies that will get you to the next level. Your ability to plan is dependent upon how much you know about the course of your business. I think we can all agree on that. The, unfortunately, with all of the information that you have to maintain, knowing about your business can become a pretty overwhelming task. And this is where reporting becomes essential. Um, good reports, whether they are financial or operational, will help you understand where you are, how you got there, and how far your current course may take you. In other words, good reporting is essential to your business. And reports really tell you three things. One, how are we doing? Right? Essentially, a scorecard. Uh, these are where your financials come in, your balance sheets, your um, your P&L, your, uh, your income statements. These things, uh, cash flow statements. These are the, the scorecards that say, how are we doing uh, as a company? Are we profitable? Right? Are we... Um, this new program that we instituted, is it working? Is it getting the results that we want? The next thing they should answer for you is, who are our customers and how much business are they doing with us? Um, customer analysis reports, um, customer satisfaction reports, these, um, these kinds of reports will tell you, um, are your customers buying? What are they buying? Right? How much are they paying for it? What kind of margin are you making? Um, these are the kinds of reports that will help you identify um, who are our best customers, not just in terms of overall dollars, but in terms of overall profitability. You may have customers that um, their uh, invoices uh, amounts may not be the highest among your customers, but in terms of the amount of time that you have to spend uh, with them or um, the amount of, uh, of you know, profit that you're making, they may, maybe they're uh, buying some of your most profitable uh, product lines. Um, these are the kinds of things that uh, reports can tell you. Um, and then the third thing is is that is uh, who are our vendors and how much business are we doing with them? Right? What are you paying for the products that you're that you're selling? Uh, are they getting the products to you on time? Um, are they offering you favorable uh, uh, conditions? Are they offering you uh, favorable terms? Um, that help you maintain good cash flow and help you uh, and help you do your business. These are the kinds of things that um, that you need to be asking yourself. And the key performance indicators that are going to help you are uh, one net profit and margin. 
right? Basically, the what that's saying is when you deduct the money you spent from the money you made, and then measure you uh, whether you are increasing in sales and growing your business. Uh, this is important um, because after all, that determines the viability of your business, who you, how you're doing, and um, gives you lets you know whether you can project uh, growth into uh, into the future. Um, what is your revenue growth rate? Um, this measure, this again measures whether you are um, increasing sales or growing your business. And coupled with the um, with your margin, you can um, determine how much um, are we generating for each dollar we make in sales. So seeing what your um, revenue growth rate is um, can help you substantially increase and and improve your ability to to be profitable and to make money. And in order to do that you have to be able to uh, do it over a period of time. Um, it has to be a, um, a definable and substantial amount of time that you can um, view your trends so that you can see just exactly uh, how your business is doing and, um, and get a good amount of data to help you make an, an accurate determination. Um, you need to see your sales to forecast performance. When you take the time to sit down and, and forecast how you want to do to achieve your goals in business, you need to be able to meticulously and, uh, and detailly, detailed have a means to, to measure. Are we making our goals? Are we, um, are we meeting the, uh, the, the goals and the, and the uh, uh, levels that we have set for ourselves? Um, you also need to monitor your outstanding invoices. This is your cash flow. This, this is you have money tied up in product, and you need to know when I send that product out, are our customers paying us for it? Do we have money tied up out in um, in receivables? Um, because that's extremely important to making sure that you are um, that you're moving that uh, that you're moving that dollar. You want to your uh, cash conversion cycle um, determines how quickly um, do we go from spending money to getting money back. And so you need to, you need to be able to monitor uh, very closely what are my outstanding invoices, and then you need to be aware of your customers' purchasing trends, because this is going to help you both on the customer and the vendor side. Because when you are aware of your customer purchasing trends, you know what they're buying, how much they're paying, and then that can uh, give you the ability to go to your vendors and uh, make better. Uh, Terms for yourselves in terms, you know, in, in buying uh, more product, getting you know better pricing when you buy larger quantities. Uh, it helps you to get rid of products, you know, sunset products that um, that you've carried uh, for a while that um, customers may not be um, particularly interested in. Um, so, customer purchasing trends is a very important uh, means for uh, determining just how you are uh, are doing in terms uh, with your um, with your sales. So the, so the question becomes, what five reports address these questions? Well, for net profit and margin, a trending income statement um, is going to uh, help you to see what your, um, what your amounts look like, what your sales look like, your, uh, your totals in terms of um, you know, revenue, your cost of sales, um, your expenses. These are things that you can look at over a, a given period of time. So you can. So a trending income statement um, really gives you the ability to see, um, you know, what we were talking about earlier. What are the what are the trends? What um, what are you seeing in terms of um, you know your uh, seasonality in in your sales and, and things like that? And that's going to help you forecast. Um, but then your revenue growth rate, as I, uh, as I mentioned, needs to be something that you can measure over a, um, a given period of time. Uh, typically, a rolling 12-month income statement lets you do that because you can roll that income statement and you can see a 12-month uh, period. And as you roll that, um, you can continuously see what your uh, what your growth rate looks like, and and it's going to help you to determine, um, you know, did uh, did we make a change that uh, that helped, or did we make a change that uh, has either caused us to flatline, or is, or is it you know level out, or 
or is it actually, um, you know, are we actually um, uh, diminishing as a, as a result of that change that we made? So a, a rolling 12-month income statement is going to help you with that. Um, sales to forecast performance can be monitored using an actual versus budget report. Um, when you are able to see the forecasted amounts that you have over a given period uh, and then uh, compare those to what are the actuals doing, that's where the rubber hits the road. That's where you can see, are we meeting our goals? How far are we from meeting our goals? Um, you know, how far have we come um, in terms of meeting our goals? What, what did last year's numbers look like? What can we, um, what can we expect? You know, that, that sort of thing. This is where you, um, this is where you actually measure yourself against what you felt, uh, you know, what you uh, felt your company should be doing uh, at a, any given time. Um, an aged and forecasted receivables report is extremely important in determining what are your outstanding invoices. Um, you, you should be able at any given day to, um, to go to a report, pull it up, see what your um, receivables look like, who's, who's past due. Um, you should be able to break it out not only by customer and how much they owe you, but 30, 60, and 90, and 90 plus days, right? How many, um, you know, who, who owes you out, um, you know, past 90 days? Uh, those are the kinds of things that you need to, to jump on quickly. Um, and as well as your forecasted receivables, who's going to owe us in the next 30, 60, and 90 days? And that helps you keep an eye on your cash flow, and it gives you the ability to um, to see where you are in terms of, of um, you know, how much product do we have out, um, you know, where is our, our money tied up. And then finally, um, a customer analysis report is what is going to help you see customer purchasing trends. Um, you should be able to see what are they buying. Uh, you should be able to, to drill down and see um, not only what are they buying in terms of amount invoiced, but also what is their average invoice size. Um, you know, what when they buy from us, typically, how much do they buy at a time? Um, what does the margin look like? You know, what is uh, how many items are we able to ship to them on a on a monthly basis? That's going to help you with inventory control, going to your vendors and um, and things like that. And a lot of times, being able to go to your vendor and show them a, a trend over a particular period of time um, can help you to get much better terms when uh, when buying uh, quantity, and it can help you um, to make sure that your vendor has that product available um, when you're uh, when you're ready to buy it so that you're uh, so that you're not back ordering products for your customers so now the question becomes okay so these are the five uh, reports that you need um, the as we mentioned earlier in terms of a reporting solution what kind of a reporting solution is going to uh, is going to help you um, main, create and maintain those uh, reports and, and what is it going to look like. Well, the first thing is is you need a reporting solution that is going to be multi-source um, capable. In other words, it has the ability to pull um, data from multiple sources, not just multiple external sources. For instance, um, you're going to be pulling information from your ERP system and um, you need to be able to Combine that with your with your CRM system and put those into a single report so that you can see um, you know who your customers are and and be able to track you know what are their terms um, you know what are they buying you know that sort of thing um, pulling data from external sources is important but not only that but pulling um, multiple types of data from internal sources your um, your ERP system for instance um, is set up so that uh, you have two different types of data. You have informational or metadata, and and that's the uh, that's uh, data about the entities in your in your system. Maybe your your account, uh, your chart of accounts. Um, you'll have uh, information in there that's specifically about the accounts. What kind of account is it? What's the name of the account? The account number, um, that sort of thing. Who are your customers? Your their contact information. Um, you know, inventory items and codes and things like that. Um, the but then you're going to have your transactional data, and that's uh, oftentimes uh, disassociated in the sense that it's it resides in different tables, and oftentimes the only link between the two is a 
uh, maybe a common uh, account key or some sort of key that, that links the tables for the ERP system, but not so easily deciphered when you're pulling the data into um, Excel, for instance, and trying to uh, map those together. Um, so the reporting system that easily takes informational data and um, puts it together with your transactional data so that um, so that you can see um, the you have your customer information but then you can also associate that very quickly to their invoice data um, you know, that sort of thing um, the the other thing that you want to look at is in terms of performance how is the data being provided to the um, to the report writing system um, in this case um, is it in memory analytics uh, or is it data warehousing uh, is it a cube and typically uh, there are two um, prevalent types of systems in memory analytics is the approach to querying data where it is actually in the computer's RAM and the uh, the advantage of that obviously is it's very quick it's fast it, it can be um, it's it's immediately updatable, so that when you have a connection to your ERP system, if it's pulling that information into your local RAM, uh, you can uh, you can have up to the um, you know up to the minute uh, transactions um, can be updated quickly, and you can have up to the minute information in your report. So they're always going to be uh, populated with the most current information. Whereas a data warehouse, um, it is a central repository. And, and that can appeal to um, a lot of users because of the, um, the ability for them to get to it. The problem with a, a data warehouse is that um, it's usually stored on a physical disk um, and, it's, and because of the way that it's, uh, that it's created, um, the database is pulling data from multiple data sources. And so what happens is it has to um, it has to up refresh overnight, and so typically when you come in, uh, you'll be working with the data from uh, information from the day before. So um, unless you have a specific mechanism in place for um, getting at the current uh, transactions or the days that current days transactions, um, your reports are always going to be a day behind. So so looking at the, at the reporting solution. Um, typically, uh, in-memory analytics has been uh, determined to be best practice um, when uh, when using a reporting solution. Um, there's a, a, a Stephen Sawyer did a, a study um, and and basically said um, that in-memory analytics is orders of magnitude more responsive than a conventional database, uh, which is able to store just a portion of the data in a, in a physical memory. And for the rest, it it, um, it has to read from, um, you know, the, the uh, for the rest it reads and writes from the physical disk. So as a result, in-memory access times are measured in nanoseconds or billions of a second, but the access times of even the fastest physical devices are measured in milliseconds. So um, so it's infinitely faster for uh, in-memory warehouse. So um, certainly uh, performance is uh, is a key factor when determining a, um, a reporting solution. Uh, the next thing to look at is how does the solution help you maintain uh, accuracy in your uh, reports? And if you're like uh, most people, um, you're creating your reports in uh, in a spreadsheet. And the most widely used spreadsheet uh, application right now is Excel. Excel is uh, far and away the, the number one uh, spreadsheet application in the world. You know, currently 1.2 billion users worldwide. Um, and right now, um, it's amazing how much information, how much data is actually stored in worksheets, where and and nowhere else, um, which is uh, which is extremely um, dangerous when you consider the fact that um, that data accuracy is such, is it such a um, is so difficult to maintain. Um, as a matter of fact, uh, industry experts have said that um, 20 to 40 percent of all spreadsheets contain errors. Um, there was a uh, Coopers and Wybran in England did a, a study and found that 90% of all the spreadsheets with more than 150 rows that they audited had errors in them. And one uh, Price Waterhouse consultant audited a, 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 a four spreadsheets from some of their largest clients and found out that found 128 errors. 
and and the thing the reason that that's important is because these spreadsheets are being used to um, disseminate data throughout the company the, these are the mechanisms that you are using to um, to do business right um, and, and according to um, the uh, the survey that Panko uh, conducted the um, what they found was only 7% of spreadsheets are of low importance and 39% were considered high importance. So if you consider the fact that, that you know, any, at any given time, 20 to 40% of these uh, high important spreadsheets have errors, um, this is the information that, uh, that, business, that you're using to make business decisions. Um, the 27% of, of worksheets modified existing corporate data. So if you have a spreadsheet that, that, um, where, that is the only source for a particular set of data, um, when you consider the rate of error in that, and then consider the fact that there are some of those that are being used to then um, update corporate data, um, that data is, that those errors are perpetuate, uh, are perpetual now because now permanent um, corporate information has been updated. Um, and 49% create new corporate data. 67% um, are run on a regular basis with only 16 um, and 17% uh, running occasionally and, uh, and just a few times respectively. And only 17% had results used only by the developer. 23% uh, um, had results that were used by multiple departments throughout the organization. And then uh, and even 29% of those had results that were used outside the firm. So when you consider the fact if you're sending reports out um, with uh, information that your customers are going to be using, your clients, um, you know, other entities, um, there's a certain amount of liability that comes along with those. So data, data accuracy is extremely important and, uh, and very difficult to maintain. Um, the final thing is spreadsheet automation. Uh, this is something in the past that has been uh, somewhat elusive. Um, because the the difficulty of getting data into Excel uh, is has prevented a lot of users from using Excel to its fullest. And when I say fullest, there are a lot of functionalities in Excel, for instance, that um, the customers um, would like to use. But again, the time that it takes to get the data into Excel, uh, format it, and get it to a to a point where they can actually use it, it becomes time prohibitive. Um, this was a comment um, that was made uh, that said that when working with an Excel spreadsheet um, becomes repetitive, you need a macro to automate the task, and for that you have to have um, Visual Basic, right? and uh, and that's uh, that's actually not true. So what we're going to do is we're going to we're going to show you how you can actually um, do all of these things um, with a um, with a product uh, called Biznet uh, Biz Insight. And uh, so I'm going to do a product demonstration for you here, and I'm going to show you those the five reports that we talked about: the trending income statement, uh, the rolling 12-month income statement, um, and so forth. Um, so for that, I'm going to open up uh, Excel here. Um, as I mentioned before, um, you know, as we're as we're going through this, uh, if you if you have any questions, uh, you know, just uh, um, go over to your um, your uh, control panel your, and uh, and submit those, and uh, we'll be happy to get those answered for you. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to I'm going to walk you through these basic reports, uh, show you how they work, um, show you what kinds of uh, information you can expect to get off of them, and and um, and just how um, they can help you with those uh, key performance indicators that we talked about. Um, as I mentioned before, here is the this first one is a a trend report. The, um, the reason that this is significant is because the trend report is going to allow you to see different um, time periods. So um, notice here we have a, a one month, um, a one month uh, report, obviously hardly a trend. But, um, and then on top of that, um, notice that this, this report is dated. Um, it, it shows uh, I have a one month income statement for the month end of July 2014. Um, I, I have my July 2014 numbers in front of me. Um, if I want to update that, uh, typically what I would have to do is I would have to um, I would have to 
bring the uh, import the information or the data into Excel from my, um, my whatever uh, source I'm trying to use my ERP system, my CRM system, whichever. Um, and then I would have to, there's a whole myriad of things I would have to do to it in order to get it to a point where I could include it in a report like this. Um, but then at the same time, this is a report I've used. You hate to, um, you know, scrap it and start from scratch. But unfortunately, um, a lot of times that's what you have to do. But with this insight, because this was created um, using uh, uh, BizNet's tools, I can simply come up here and I'm going to change my, the date and I'm going to change the, the year and month. I notice when I do that, um, it now says one month income statement for the month end of December 2015. I now have my, my current information in front of me. This report is updated and refreshed in just a matter of seconds with a few mouse clicks. Now if I want to, if I want to do a trend, now what I can do is let's say I want to do a quarterly trend. Um, I'm going to make that first month October instead of December. And I'm going to come over here and I'm going to highlight that column and I'm going to drag it over three months and boom, just like that. Notice I, my title is updated. I have a three-month trending income statement um, for the year, uh, for the quarter end of December 2015. I have uh, three months worth of uh, data in front of me. This um, this report is ready to go. So now I'm beginning to uh, I'm beginning to see the um, the starting of, of a trend. I can I can look at this. I can do um, there are various things that I can do with this data now to uh, um, to see you know what is it uh, what does it look like um, uh, for a given period. So what I can do now is uh, I can do things like this. Suppose I wanted to see you know what do my sales uh, uh, look like over a given period. I can uh, um, I go over here maybe look at my revenue hardware account and I can come up here. I'm going to insert a, a, a chart here that will. Uh, I'm going to insert a chart here that will give me a, um, an idea. Um, I can use a, a bar chart, or I could uh, I could even do a, a line chart, right? That would give me a, a trend line. And, and the reason that that is significant is because the uh, because of the ability to very quickly add uh, elements that I can then use to um, to see what does my this is specifically what this is telling me. What does my trend look like over this? Um, you know, over this given period, um, I could do if I wanted to add a. Let's say that I wanted to do, um, you know, six months. Um, I could do uh, a. Let's see, I could go like this, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna pull, I'm gonna draw that out another three months. And so now I can do a, um, I can do a six month trend, right? And so um, see how quickly I'm able to, uh, I'm able to create this, uh, this report move it out and actually get that uh, that trending information here. And um, I can, you know, I could go out uh, with this piece of I could go out as far as I wanted to and I could uh, I could add that, uh, you know, that trend line, um, you know, as far out as I wanted to as well. So I have the ability to um, alter this report very quickly. As you saw, I went from a uh, from an old one month report to a current uh, month end report, the current quarter ended to a current six months report in just a matter of seconds with a few mouse clicks. And I can even add um, specific elements to it that, uh, um, that allow me to see that data, um, you know, see that trend very easily. Um, and th then I'm able to actually uh, drill down into that data because of the uh, direct connection that this insight gives um, between, your, between Excel and your ERP system. Um, I can use, uh, I now have a direct connection that will allow me to go and drill down into um, any of these values and see the data or the line item detail from the database that makes up that particular value. So I can drill down into any of these, um, uh, you know, any of these account numbers, uh, balances, and see just exactly what the transactions are that, uh, that make up those accounts. So a, six, so a trending income statement um, allows me to see just how I am doing uh, over a uh, given period of time. And so a, a trending income statement becomes very important in uh, helping you to determine, you know, what is my, um, you know, what is my uh, net profit uh, margin look like? Um, because now I can see just exactly uh, what my net income uh, looks like as well. I can very easily 
um, add a, a chart here um, that will show me what my how my uh, my net income is trending over that that same period. So now I can look at you know what are my revenues and and uh, and I can compare those to my uh, my you know my net income uh, that sort of thing. The next one that uh, that I mentioned was the um, twelve month rolling income statement. And what this is going to do is it's going to help me see what does my reg revenue growth rate look like over any given period. And the reason that the rolling 12-month uh, report be is significant is because I can continue to see what my um, growth rate looks like for any period. Um, if, I have <clears throat> if I have 10 years' worth of data in my ERP system, I can use this rolling 12-month report to see any uh, 12-month period in my uh, in my data. Notice that um, my current period shows October 2015. Um, at any given time, I can change that. Uh, I can change that current period, and it's going to update. But so are the previous 11 months. So I have a true rolling 12-month uh, report. This is a report that you um, rare, will rarely see with uh, a uh, certainly with the canned reports that you get from your ERP system. But it's extremely important um, because you need to be able to, to monitor that, that trend over a, uh, a moving period so that you can get a real idea of just, um, just how you're doing. And a 12-month period is a significant am uh, enough amount of time for you to be able to see what does my viability look like going into um, the next year. Notice um, I have my profit margin um, on here. Um, so I can look at my total revenues, um, my cost of sales, and my expenses, but then I can, uh, I can add uh, profit margin. If I want to see the individual account balances for any of these values, um, I, can, um, I can do that. I can add roll-ups so that I can um, expand any of those sections. I can see any of those values, and I can even drill down onto these account balances and see the, um, see the transactions that make up those values. Um, I can also do um, I can do pivot tables. Um, a lot of uh, a lot of people like to use pivot tables because of the ability that they give you to uh, move around very quickly and, and format the data in in a uh, in a way that uh, is, is easily readable. Uh, notice when I click on that, it brings up my field editor, and I can uh, I can move these fields around. Uh, let's say I want to make GL account number my row header, and maybe in this particular case, um, I want to uh, I want to make a uh, location my column header. I can do those sorts of things and still be able to see the um, uh, the line item detail from the database that makes up this value. So I've given my user the ability to move around in this data and go from a very high level view of this uh, report to a very uh, to a line item view in just a matter of seconds with just a few mouse clicks. So a lot of information that can be had on this particular report. And, um, and in terms of, of seeing my revenue growth rate, um, this um, is very good about showing me at a glance, um, you know, what does my growth, growth rate look like over a, a given uh, period of time. Um, the next one that we talked about was the um, was in terms of uh, actual versus budget report, which is going to show me how am I doing in terms of my uh, my sales versus what I've forecasted for the year. Um, notice that uh, you have here, um, I have all of my, my budget numbers that I have for the year. Um, and then uh, in this particular case, I have uh, my January actuals. And the, the great thing about a report like this, especially when it's connected directly to your, um, to your data, is that I can get a, a cumulative view of what are my actuals against my budget. So I can get a cumulative uh, percentage of goals. So as the year progresses, I can see just exactly how I'm uh, progressing towards my goal. Um, and notice that uh, if I uh, if I select uh, if I select uh, let's say you know April here, uh, I'm going to come over here. I'm going to select April. Notice that it goes and it, it replaces my budget numbers with actual numbers. And, uh, and again, I can drill down onto any of these numbers and see uh, you know, the transactions. So um, as the year progresses, notice that my actuals is cumulative. So this is a great way for me to monitor how am I doing in terms of my sales and revenue 
towards my goal? How far do I have? At what point do I, um, you know, am I going to achieve my goal? And uh, as the year progresses, I can actually see, um, you know, when I meet my goal. And I can look at last year's numbers as well and say, you know, when did we, at what point did we achieve our goal last year? And so that helps me to, uh, in terms of uh, um, forecasting for um, next year as well. So it gives me a benchmark, and I can see how are we doing? Are we achieving our goals? Are we meeting our, our, um, you know, the, the standards that we've set? And uh, and by using the other uh, reports, um, you can make sure that those those standards that you set are going to uh, help your company to be profitable, and uh, you know, achieve a, a particular um, amount of profitability and growth. Uh, the, the next one we talked about was the aged receivables report. This is extremely important um, because at any given time you need to know um, how are we, um, how are we doing in terms of our cash flow? How much product, um, you know, cash do we have tied up in product um, that we haven't been paid for? That's extremely important, and it, you need to be able at any given time to see uh, just exactly what that looks like. Um, so this aging report, notice that it shows a list of the customers that owe us money. Um, I have my total outstanding, but I also have it broken out into 30, 60, 90, and 90 plus days, as well as what do they have upcoming in the next 90 days. Um, but notice if I come up here and I change that aging date, um, my entire report is going to update. So I get a, a snapshot of what do, um, as of today or as of a given date, what did um, you know? What do those past dues and um, and forecasted receivables look like? What can I expect to have coming in in the next 90 days? Um, and then you know, remember on the um, on that uh, rolling report, I showed you how a we can attach it that uh, to this data that is dynamic. Um, well, we can do the same thing here. There are other Excel elements that we can incorporate into our reports that help us to. Um, to get uh, information at a moment's glance. Um, for instance, here, I've added a spark chart to the end to show just what their trend looks like during that 30, 60, and 90 um, days. Are they, are they trending up? In other words, are they, are, do they owe us money? Are, they, you know, are their past dues in, uh, increasing? Or are they starting to pay their bills? Um, and the reason that, that is significant is because um, being able to manage your cash flow is extremely important. Um, in in determining not just how you're going to be doing in the future, but how are you how viable are you right now? What is my ability right now to um, to get money together to um, to fuel future growth and, and continued growth? Um, suppose, for instance, that <clears throat> my warehouse uh, workers come in and they say, "Hey, uh, we just got a couple of orders in: one from um, Blackwell Emulsion and one from Computer Repair and Sales." And they um, they both want the same product. We don't have enough to fill both orders. What should we do? In the past, you would probably look at this and say, um, you know, um, computer repair and sales does a lot of business with us. Um, but now, what you're finding out is is that yeah, they do a lot of business, and um, they have a lot of um, past due invoices. And in the past, um, they'd either come in, you know, they'd take the the first come first serve. Or they would take, um, you know, they would go with the biggest customer. And um, in this case, what would happen is we can bring this up, this report up very quickly, and look and say, okay, um, as of today's date, it looks like uh, computer repair and sales uh, past due invoices are actually trending up, um, whereas black hole emotion is trending down. So they're starting to pay the bills. So you can go to them and say, hey, you know what? Go ahead and fill the black little emulsion order. I will get with uh, computer repair and sales and talk to them about the back order product. And then at that point, you can approach them about their past dues. So you've just used this report um, in a moment's notice, in a matter of seconds, to make a decision that has a direct effect on your cash flow and your, um, and your bottom line. So these reports become not just um, after the fact historical um, data, but actual usable living documents that are providing you with um, uh, with accurate up to the minute uh, information um, that you can use to make business um, business decisions quickly, and because of the fact that this uh, is connected directly to your database, there are no errors in these in these spreadsheets because the data is coming directly from the ERP system. There's no hand 
um, you know, there's no typing in the, the values. These are coming directly from the ERP system, so accuracy is not an issue. Um, these are these have an active, um, you know, hard uh, connection to your data, so you know that these numbers are correct, and so you can make those decisions with the surety that that the information is up to date and and right. Um, here's a customer analysis report. And the last thing we talked about was um, who's doing business with us, right? Um, and how much business are they doing? At any given time, um, notice this here. Um, we've, viewed, we've created a, a, a table of, um, of a list of our customers. And I can see uh, using uh, um, conditional formatting in Excel, I can see who uh, not only who's doing business with us, but um, how much are they buying? Who are my top customers uh, in any given month in terms of amount invoice? But also average invoice amount, I can see quantity shipped, uh, gross margin. Um, you know, I, I have a, a, a myriad of, of categories that I can use to um, to determine uh, who are my who are my best customers, and that becomes very valuable when you're trying to uh, pinpoint. You know, use marketing dollars wisely and pinpoint a specific segment of your of your customer base. Um, and, and creating reports that that provide information quickly and, and, and in essence actually draw your eye to the information that you're looking for um, is extremely important. Notice that as I, as I progress each month um, that updates um, to, so that I see who are, my, who are my top customers. And combined with the bar chart, I can even look how quickly your eye is drawn to who was my top customer for a particular month. Right? So, you're actually directing the uh, the user to get the information from the report that you're looking for, and I can even um, I can drill down into this report as well, and I can see the invoice information. What are they buying? I can see item IDs and things like that, um, and quantities. You know, what are they buying? How much did they pay? Um, I can see what is my gross margin for a particular um, product. So I can see who are my top customers. What are they buying? And, um, and how much am I and, and how much am I making? Um, and then on top of that, I can uh, I can do it by um, by territory, so that now I can um, I can create these reports to um, to distribute to um, you know department managers or location managers uh, um, you know for a given territory, for instance, to see um, not only uh, they don't have to decipher um, out of that information. Um, you know what? Uh, what is you know? How is this pertinent to me? Uh, they're able to get the information that they need very quickly, and you can create it very quickly. Because now, um, what you're able to do is, uh, I'll show you here in just a second how um, there, we have a, will allow you to distribute these reports. Because um, notice, I can create a multiple combinations of this report off of this one worksheet. I'm no longer having to manage multiple versions um, to send out. I can uh, I can create the report once and then um, set establish my parameters so that I can uh, on the fly I can create multiple combinations and uh, send those out. But uh, but again, more importantly, um, all of these reports allow me to monitor uh, specific KPIs, um, and so I can see those performance indicators, how they're doing, and and I can even add um, elements to them that are going to help me more. Uh, fully visualize uh, just how they're doing. In this case, like I said, a chart um, with a trend line. And so now we start getting into more of the uh, analytics uh, side of Excel. And we can um, actually uh, use charts to do things like uh, dashboarding. Um, here's a, um, a dashboard that's created with uh, that has a, a multiple of uh, these KPIs uh, using just um, the insight functions and Excel charts. Um, connected to uh, this ERP data. Um, notice I can come over here, I can change uh, the month here, and, and uh, this dashboard is going to update. So I can add this executive dashboard to a report, and, uh, and it's going to, uh, I can get that information that I need very quickly, uh, easily, and, um, and right away. So the last thing that, uh, that I want to show you is um, being able to monitor those, um, those KPIs and being able to um, get uh, readily uh, access to the reports that are going to allow you to do that um, becomes uh, it becomes difficult if 
of all of those reports are created or, and, and located and, and maintained in, in a single um, location unless the person that's doing that has the ability to get them out quickly and, and, and get them out uh, um, easily and get those distributed. Um, and even uh, automating that, um, that process um, is, is a great way to uh, disseminate that information out to the people that need to see it. And that's exactly what uh, this broadcast is meant to do. Um, what uh, notice here that <clears throat> I can add a distribution template to my report and then um, I can use this broadcast to determine which uh, rendering format I want to send it out in, whether it's PDF, uh, values only. Um, I can send it to, uh, I can send it out uh, via, uh, as HTML, um, so I can publish it to the web. I can send it to an FTP site. Um, I can send this information out, but I, I can determine what uh, rendering format I want, and then I can determine where I want it to go. Um, I can send it to any shared or local path that I have access to. That includes a, uh, that includes a website or an FTP site, so I can uh, publish it to the web. Um, I can also send it to an email address. I can either type that email address in, or it's integrated to my email um, application so that I can use my address book and pull contacts out that way. Um, I don't have to send all of the worksheets in my report. I can send uh, just a few of them. Uh, here, um, I can send one, um, one report, or all of them, or any combination uh, in between. Um, and then when I send out, uh, when I designate which report I want to send, I can also tell it which uh, parameters I want to use. Remember the customer analysis report um, that I showed you um, with the different territories, the different months, the different years. Here I've, uh, I've told it I want to send out that customer analysis report, and I've told it what year, what month, and which territories I want to send. And when I get that set up, I come up here and I simply click Run Now. And what it's going to provide is it's going to provide a, in this case, a PDF. Here's a, um, a PDF uh, report that was created um, from that uh, template that I just showed you. Um, notice it's true Adobe format. I have uh, bookmarks here so that I have my multiple reports. And then remember, um, I, I was telling you the you can um, give it a combination of, of parameters for that report, and it will create those versions on the fly. So I don't have to pre-create them, make sure they're, um, they're updated and, uh, and maintain them that way. It will do it on the fly, and, uh, and it will send it out for me. Um, notice uh, here, it's created uh, every one of those, uh, you know, every one of those uh, uh, versions of that report uh, and send them out. They exist only here, and I can email that out or, or publish it, and um, you know, however I want to do. And uh, and that was simply by setting this up, clicking Run Now. Um, it'll use what the information that I put here in my um, in my distribution template to send it out, or I can use a scheduler. That's when I say set schedule. Um, it pops up the scheduler. I can determine my frequency, whether it's hourly, daily, weekly, monthly. Um, I can tell it how often I want it to go out. Maybe the first Monday, was, for instance, of every month. Um, I simply put that in. I tell it what date I want it to start. In this case, uh, you know, let's say I want it to start at the end of the month or the first of next month. And uh, I, I put in that date. I say, OK. It's now attached to that um, report. And on that date, it's going to open up. Uh, the report and it'll send it out um, however frequently I've told it to and then it'll use the information on my distribution template to uh, to create the report and send it out so um, so I can uh, truly automate the uh, the refreshing I can create a report one time attach a biz broadcast uh, template to it and I don't have to touch that report again unless I want to make changes to the report itself or changes to to how and to whom it's being sent so, the so as we mentioned, the um, it becomes extremely important to have the kinds of reports and to be able to create the, the kinds of reports that um, that will allow you to uh, monitor these uh, performance indicators that'll tell you just how your business is doing. Because again, it goes back to how are we doing, how are our customers doing, and how are our vendors? You know, how are we relating to our vendors? Uh, to our vendors? Are we profitable? Because all of those together will determine um, just how viable your business is. Are you profitable? And uh, 
and BizInsight um, allows you to do that because um, you can uh, connect to any data anywhere. Um, you can connect directly to your ERP or any database um, and, and any data source for that matter, whether it's on premises or, or in the cloud. Um, and you can um, you can answer complex questions in seconds using uh, the uh, query tool. Um, you can uh, create just about any report that you um, that you need, uh, as you can see. And uh, you can create lists. Um, you can create a single function, so you can do ad hoc uh, type analysis as well, and then drill down into those details. And then you, with this broadcast, once you create those reports, then you can you have um, um, you know 12 different formats that you can use. The 11 that I showed you plus Excel, um, an Excel uh, format with these insight functions. Um, you can create multi-location reports. Um, so that you're pulling data from um, you know multiple sources into a single report and uh, sending that out, and you can even set up triggers and, and timers so that, um, for instance, if you have a report and you can tell it you want it to refresh hourly, and and you can designate a specific uh, um, a specific value, and if it drops below a certain amount or it goes above a certain amount, you can say you know send it to you know send it out to um, me or to a given person you know yourself. Uh, that sort of thing, and so you can set triggers and timers and things like that. So just to, to just to um, to recap, um, you know the the uh, BizNet Excel suite. Uh, it's very powerful. It's easy to use. You can um, you can use it to build these reports that we've shown you in minutes. Um, you have a direct real time connection to your data, and you can connect to any data. And with this broadcast, you can distribute hundreds of those reports with just a, a single click, as you saw, or even Automate it with the, the scheduler so that you don't uh, um, you don't have to do anything. It will automatically open up and, and do that for you. So I'd like to thank you very much for being with us today. Um, as I mentioned, if you if you have any questions, you know, please uh, uh, submit those to us, and uh, you can certainly do that by email. Um, if uh, you know at any time, and we're happy to answer those for you. Um, if you would like to see a, a specific uh, demo, um, please contact us. We would love to um, get with you and um, and get into a little more detail about how the product works, show you how it works, show you how you can create a report, you know, things like that, and talk a little bit more about those um, about the reports that we um, that we showed you and, and just uh, how they can help you uh, um, be more successful in your business. Again, thank you very much. And have a good day. Yes. All right. Hey, folks, uh, I want to thank you all for uh, submitting your questions. They were very helpful. Uh, I was able to clear them all, Charles, but I did just want to leave on a note. We are two weeks away from our fifth annual Excelapalooza. Uh, you can get all the information at Excelapalooza.com. 19 CPE hours uh, offered this year. Uh, we have a feature presentation from a senior program manager in, in Microsoft's Excel product team. Mr. Excel, Bill Jellin is back. Mac McClellan from K2 Enterprises is back. And again, uh, lots of really in-depth training on not only Excel, but uh, Biz Insight and Biz Broadcast. So I wanted to leave you with that little reminder. Take care, everyone.